Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So one of the things I love about Halloween is that there's just so many different ways you can decorate for it. So in this video, I'm going to step outside of my cemetery aesthetic and build a treasure chest that would be a perfect fit for a pirate themed haunt or party. So let's get to it. This build will start with a few pieces of one inch insulation foam, two pieces for the front and back, two sides, two half rounds for the lid, and six planks for the top. A bottom seemed unnecessary, but you could add one in if that fits your needs. With that out of the way, let's get down to building. Now I could have done planks for the entire build, but to save a bit of time, I'm going to use my planks as a guide for some V-shaped score lines that'll cut into the foam with a razor blade. This will give the appearance of individual boards without having to cut them out. And when all my lines are cut, I can shift my focus to making them look more like old wood. Longtime viewers of the channel will know that one of my favorite tricks for making foam look like old wood is to scrape it with a wire brush. And since the treasure chest has a lot of wood planks, I think it's time for a scraping montage. With all of our pieces thoroughly wood grained, let's talk about the top of our treasure chest. Because this piece is round and our planks are flat, we'll need to add some facets to these pieces. So I've marked out the width of each plank and will draw myself a guideline to sand down to so that the planks will have a solid surface to be glued to. And speaking of glue, I'll be using my Sherbonder Cosplay Stick hot glue to hold everything together. Much to my surprise, it works great on this XPS insulation foam and helps to make quick time of this build. So with my glue gun in hand, I got to attaching my planks. For this build, I use three inch planks, but I'm recommending that you use four inch planks to close up the gaps a bit better. Or if you want a really old and rickety looking chest and want to stretch your materials a bit further, go with three inch like I did. Either way, they'll both look the part. Now that all the lid planks are glued in, I can switch over to assembling the bottom of the chest. And just as I glued in my sides, I realized I forgot to taper them. So after a quick measurement and some cut lines drawn, I could trim off the excess and resume assembly. And just for a bit of added stability, I ran some extra glue along the inside faces. It's probably unnecessary, but better safe than sorry. With the main structures assembled, it's time to get into the decorative elements, starting with this two inch wide EVA foam that I'll be using to recreate the look of iron bands. If you wanted to get a bit more decorative, you could heat press some designs into the foam, cut it into different shapes, or even use a rotary tool to add hammer marks. This is a great opportunity to add some personality to the chest, although for this build, I'm keeping it nice and simple. Off camera, I gave everything a coat of black acrylic paint, and now I can start adding in some color to the bands. I'm using a dark metallic acrylic paint to help make the foam banding look a bit less like foam. I had wanted to add rivets, but I ran out of googly eyes. But then after looking through my supplies, I found these self-adhesive rubber feet and thought they'd get the job done. So now I just need to apply them and give them a quick coat of paint. Ideally, they would have been applied before the black base layer, 
but sometimes you just have to roll with the punches and make the best of it. Once the paint had dried, I could start working on the planks. And for that, I'll be using a bit of raw sienna acrylic paint and we'll be dry brushing it on. This method will add just enough color to the outermost edge while keeping the black paint in the recesses. I started pretty light with my dry brushing and as I got a better feel for how it looked, I increased the amount of paint on my brush. This is a pretty forgiving technique, but like most things, it's usually best to get a feel for it before going too far. It's also a good idea to keep a damp rag handy just in case you get some of your paint onto the metallic bands. I'll apply paint to the entire chest and then set it aside to dry. Off camera, I added in these hinge pieces made from the same three millimeter foam that the rest of the banding is made from. I also added some banding along the lower edge of the lid since it looked unfinished when I set the lid on top of the base. The last part of this build is a bit of aging with a light gray wash. This step is optional, but I think it makes the bands look a bit more interesting and adds some variety to the coloring of the planks. My mixture is about 10 parts water to one part paint. I'm not looking for a lot of color in this step. I just want to desaturate the coloring of the treasure chest a bit so that it doesn't look quite so punchy. You can apply as much or as little as you like and touch up any areas with a damp rag to prevent unwanted runs or pooling of paint. And after a bit of dry time, I think it's safe to call this treasure chest done. Now there's plenty of different ways you could customize this prop, or you could take parts of this build to use on something completely different. But whatever you're working on, hopefully you'll find some of these methods helpful in bringing your ideas to life. I'd like to thank Surebonder for sponsoring this video, and be sure to check out their website for their entire line of products. That's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>